one of the things that came through last year was this optical chip to chip networking co-packaged optics paradigm i've done a number of videos on this and realistically there are only a few key players in the market uh broadcom has their own solution and videos shown off some of their co-packaged optics they what they define as cpo is different to what everybody else defines as cpo but whatever and then we have three major startups uh ir labs celestial uh, and light matter the subject of this video now, Celestial was just acquired by Marvell in order to implement their solution, which just left IR Labs and Light Matter. Now, the context of this video actually started in August last year. Um, I was at the Hot Chips conference, and there was a big optical session with four of the main players there presenting their co packaged optics solution. In this video, I'm going to start from that premise what happened at that conference, what happened afterwards and what we saw in terms of real-world demo. And sponsoring this part of the video is ASM, a company tackling the most complex material science challenges in semiconductors. Their systems shape the atomic layers that sit inside every logic chip, every memory device, and every power transistor. These layers are measured in angstroms, a million times thinner than a human hair, yet they determine how efficient our technology can be. Just one or two misplaced atoms can mean the difference between a good, power-efficient chip and a bad, power-hungry one. ASM's leading expertise turns chemistry into architecture, fueling our insatiable demand for a more interconnected, intelligent and greener world. You can see more of their work today at ASM.com. Okay, set the scene, and for full disclosure here, IR Labs is one of my clients at this time. And the concept was co-packaged optics in terms of chip-to-chip -chip or chip-to-memory is expected to be a big thing in AI come 27, 28, 29. The whole idea of rather than scale up with just copper, let's scale up with optics, but in a way that makes sense that it's high bandwidth, uh, low energy per bit, and easy enough to integrate into these high-powered ASICs. Last year, I did a video with IR Labs showing off that, hey, you can take their solution and you can put a hairdryer to it, showing that they were their demo was thermally stable. Uh, we'd also seen IR Labs having demos uh, in the years previous, showing that the solution works. And in reality, today, their solution is more of a scale-up manufacturing uh, than it is a solving the technology. Um, Let's put Celestial to, to the one side because they've been acquired now and that's a different set of rules that apply to them, which leaves Light Matter. And Light Matter have been showing off their solution for co-packaged optics using um, an optical interposer type technology since, I think, December 22. I remember that because I was at one of the IEEE conferences around that time where one of their engineers, uh, I think it was even their CEO, um, Nick Harris, brought one of their, uh, packet, their passage wafer um, interposers to the conference and here's a picture of me biting it. And between then and, say, August 25 in this case, They'd spoken a lot about their design. They'd done a lot of marketing effort. They put a lot of effort into their imagery, into their discussions. And obviously at the time, you know, the whole point is we're developing a package to be used by multiple clients and probably one or two in a very major way. So come August 25, it's the Hot Chips Conference. And I've covered the conference a lot on this channel over the years. It's one of these where everybody talks about computer architecture and systems architecture in a very technical way and every presentation there is meant to be merit-based. So Light Matter were there, there was an optical session, as I say four of the major optical players were showing off their CPO solutions and along comes Light Matter and we get a very similar presentation to ones that I've at least seen before, um, may have been new to a lot of the audience. Uh, but in came the Q&A session. This is you know, literally two to three minutes of opportunity for the audience, both in the room and online, to ask questions. And I stood up and I asked this question. Hi, Ian Cutris, more than more. Um, love the presentation. I've been following you guys since I saw the first um, stuff from 2022, back at the IEEE conferences back then. 
Um, and I've been to every event, every place where you've presented this stuff and the road to this stuff, but I've yet to see a public demo, and that concerns me. When are we going to get a public demo of this technology? It's, it's coming up in SC25 this year. Perfect, thank you. Now, if you couldn't quite hear it, that actually got a few laughs from the room. And immediately after that session, I already had emails in my inbox from people saying, thank you for asking that question. Um, it had been on a lot of people's minds who track this sort of stuff. The fact that we had not yet seen a public demo from Light Matter on the situation. Uh, however, I also had Light Matter employees come up to me. Um, and basically turn around and say, yeah, we've got demos. You want to see them? And the speaker, uh, you know, on stage, he said, we're going to have a demo at Supercomputing 2025. This is November. Um, but if you want to come by the office at any time, you can come see a demo. Um, unfortunately, the only time I had available to go to their office was at a time when they were moving offices. So I had to wait until Supercomputing in order to see the demo. So let's fast forward now to Supercomputing 2025. Uh, this year it was held in St. Louis, Missouri, and it's the high performance computing conference of the year. They've still got a couple more videos from that conference to come out. Uh, but in this case, I organized time to go see Light Matter, and they had two demos, uh, two running live demos at their booth to show off. Now, this first one was actually on the booth floor. This is the one that the public could see. And it involved a system, uh, two systems with two direct links between them, uh, two optical links going through 200 meters of cable. They were showing off their 50 gig optical link with an error rate of about 1 times 10 to the negative 10, running at about 2.2, 2.3 picojoules per bit. Um, you know, and here's a, here's a video and here's some images of, of, of that demo. This is showing off uh, what, what they had essentially is two of their interposer chips. So the idea being that these are like 4,400 square millimeter packages um, where you have the compute on top and then you have an optical interposer underneath. And that optical interposer is what shuttles data around. And the idea is that you could also shuttle data between different parts of the chip, but also chip to chip. I've, they've been showing off this like eight fingered solution for a while now, but this is the first time I actually saw it running in person um, with some data to show it off. Um, that was pretty cool. It was all kind of behind the shelving unit. They wouldn't let anybody open it up um, or, or anything, but they would you know, happily talk about the data that was being shown. And we got a good few pictures of that. Um, the funny thing enough, I actually saw that just as a show floor was ending and came back the next day. And the next day, they uh, took me into their private showroom to show me more demos. Now, the private showroom had two demos. One was the same one we'd seen on the show floor, uh, showing roughly the same sort of numbers. Uh, so, so that's two demos now. The third one was a little bit more intricate. Third one, we had similar sort of setup, two uh, interposers, two chips in two different servers. But in this instance, they were connected in a very much an all-to-all -all fashion. So all the outputs from one chip were going into all the inputs of another chip. Some of these connections were, they looked like they were literally like six inches. Um, some of them may have been like three feet, four feet. The whole idea of this technology is that you can go across a data center. So it's meant to go, you know, 100 meters or so, you know, at the end of the day. That's why the, the other demo had you know, 200 meters of cable in one big spool, just to show that you could put it over a data center. But this one was meant to be more of an all-to-all, -all, um, and it just used a lot shorter connections just for simplicity. Uh, and this was showing off uh, the same data rate, 50 gig SERDES, uh, uh, roughly the same bit error rate as well, uh, roughly the same power. The thing is, with this demo, they also showed off um, their little interface they had that showed the error rate for the links. Now, as I said before, due to how these packages work, you can either connect different cores on the same package or go across chip to chip for different cores. The whole idea of being that this is more of a knock technology and you're extending the knock rather than it just being a networking technology. Knock stands for network on chip. And 
going through, they had so many point to point connections that was tracking that were tracking the bit error rate. Just going through, scrolling, you're scrolling. You can see it in the uh, in the video here. Um, all of these were showing off the bit error rates of each of the connections. Now, in some cases, the bit error rate was zero, meaning no errors. Uh, in other cases, it was 10 to the negative 16. Worst case was uh, around 10 to the negative 11. I may even see you saw one at 10 to the negative 10. Um, but this is just showing off you know, the full all-to-all -all connectivity. Uh, a bit more about the setup. So they had these two chips. The whole point is that it's designed to be around uh, 1.5 to 2 kilowatts a piece of active ASIC. Uh, and they were using uh, water chillers in order to keep them at a constant temperature. One of the criticisms of a number of optical technologies is that they can be thermally unstable. Um, light matter, or thermally unstable, I should say, light matter says they don't have a problem with that, but just for consistency and just to replicate what was likely happening in a data center, they had chillers working on both chips, keeping them about 25 degrees. Um, that's like a little orange flag, because obviously if you want to show off that you're thermally stable, you need to, you know, do what we did with IR labs and do the hairdryer. Um, but it, it was interesting to see. I did want to uh, take, you know, at least pull a little bit of the drawer out on either demo to show off. Uh, and they said, uh, we're not going to let you do that um, because of static. And you might think, well, hang on, static hasn't been that much of a problem uh, for chips for a while. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, the booth that they had uh, was all carpeted. And of course, you've got massive racks. Um, and so while they had anti-static wristbands, um, best leave that to installation and, uh, and, and taking it all down rather than, you know, Yobbo here trying to take it apart. Uh, I still have an open offer to go see them uh, in the Bay Area, which I may be doing soon at least. Uh, we also have uh, OFC, the optical conference, coming up. Uh, in mid-March. Unfortunately, it's the same week as GTC, and GTC is in the Bay Area, and the Optical Conference is going to be in uh, LA. So we'll see how well attended the Optical Conference is this year. Um, I'll probably be going to both, but it was interesting to see the demo live. Um, and with Celestial kind of out of the picture now that they're with Marvell, we're in this interesting situation where these optical connectivity companies, right, it is an expensive technology compared to just doing copper surdies. Um, I've got an interview with uh, AMD CTO Mark Papermaster coming out uh, either this week or next week, uh, where he I ask him, can you put electrical and optical in the same design? And his answer was essentially, you have to, um, in order to bridge the gap between going between fully electrical and fully optical uh, on the surdies connectivity side. Uh, so it is possible, but you still need to be a big company with lots of chips and lots of deployable chips in order to integrate an optical solution in the first place. So the idea is that there are perhaps only a dozen, maybe 15 big customers worldwide who fit into that bracket. And all these startups and, you know, on top of that, you know, Broadcom and Marvell uh, have to fit into that regime. So one big question here is who exactly is Light Matter's major customer? Um, I believe they've said it's a hyperscaler. They haven't said who. They haven't said what market yet. Uh, and if they're going to be building, you know, thousands and thousands of chips uh, or tens of thousands or maybe even hundred thousand, then manufacturing and consistency manufacturing on top of things like longevity and uh, failure rates of the chip have to all be taken into account. And realistically, when we speak to these optical companies, the reason why they say 27, 28, 29, and you know, 28 and 29 more than 27 at this point, uh, is realistically down just due to uh, ramping up uh, production and then putting it into the designs. The fact that you can now, uh, as uh, one of the others has demonstrated, you can do chip to memory. So instead of having a HBM module right next to your AI ASIC, you connect it via optics to a bank of HBM that may have a universal addressable space, means that you're no longer tied to the shoreline. Light Matter's argument is that, you know, it can also be um, mid chip, so you're not rely you're not shoreline related uh, limited anyway. 
but you put that into, say, a stack of 100 terabytes of HBM in this uh, rack over here, and a bunch of servers can use it from anywhere in a data center, suddenly you're not limited to however many tens or hundreds of gigabytes you put on your ASIC uh, coming through. In terms of you know Nvidia's lineup, when we actually might see say chip to chip for the AI ASIC, uh, some theoretical uh, points to uh, Feynman in the sort of 28, 29 time frame. Uh, AMD not sure yet, and when it comes to anybody else, arguably Google might even be one of the first to do it because they have their optical circuit switching technology. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, Light Matter finally has a public demo. Um, I'm going to see what else they're doing inside. Uh, and I've been trying to get an interview with a CEO for a couple of years. Uh, let's see if we can make it happen in 26. Um, but thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.